Are you ready for an evening tour around the plot? We've got apple blossom, the peonies are coming up, sunshine, bird song, a very friendly robin. Let's go. It is an absolutely beautiful evening on the plot after a very busy day. Hello, Robin, you've got to stop doing that. You know my Robin friend, he's getting ever so friendly and he's currently sat on the camera. Yes, please don't poo on my camera, it's rather new. Um, but yes, oh, a heron. My gosh, all the birds are out today. I'm sorry, I'm so distracted. <laughs> but yes, we've got a beautiful evening. I've had a busy day sorting out my strawberry, no, yeah, my strawberry patch. The makeover that's happening that's finished today and you know what i thought it's such a beautiful light and tomorrow it's going to tip it down with rain so i thought let's do the tour tonight but yes april it's been a very busy month I'm starting to panic a little bit because all i've been doing is sort of getting the groundwork finished from winter and now i've got potatoes to plant dahlias to plant and seeds to sow <laughs> it's all getting a little bit <laughs> anybody else feeling like that Oh, but breathe. Plenty of time. The days are getting longer. The weather is finally starting to settle. We've had a lot of turbulent weather. It's been incredibly windy for the last 10 days. I'm sick of it. Uh, so today it actually feels like the first day in two weeks where it's a little bit calm. So anyway, enough rambling, I think. Let's head up to the gates and start the tour. This month has gone so fast. I don't know where the time's gone and I'm a bit worried because I've not sewn much at all yet but you know the days are getting longer which means I can be sewing right into the night time now but let's go have a look at the plot. Everything's just starting to come right into bloom and you may notice we are shooting on some new gear so do bear with me if I have any technical hiccups as I'm still figuring it all out. But here in Grandma's Border, we've got tulips and the honesty is flowering. And the peonies as well, Grandma's peonies with their beautiful foliage. I keep trying to pull out the bindweed when I see it. Uh, but yeah, everything is just looking so good. Even the roses, look how much growth they've put on. And this month for me has been mainly focusing on getting the ground ready for the new season because I've been a little bit behind after the wet winter that we've had. And do you notice anything different? <laughs> Something's changed, doesn't it? The strawberry cages, as you'll find out in a separate video that may or may not be out already, uh, it's had its makeover. We've suppressed all of the bindweed and the ground elder over there. And now the strawberries are over here. I haven't planted all my potatoes yet, but when I do, they'll all be sat on the wood chip that's over here. That's on top of plastic and that's smothering the bindweed and the ground elder. My arch is looking really good in this evening sun. Not sure yet what we'll be planting up for them, but probably some squash again. And underneath so far, what have we got down here? Alliums and forget-me-nots. There's lots of buds on the alliums now, and it won't be long until they're blooming. I love it when you can just see them sort of creeping through. It's almost like they're ready to burst open. And it's that time of the year when everything's just growing at such a terrific rate. But at the moment, this is probably the best spot. Look at that. Just how stunning is the apple tree right now? It's in full bloom and it looks absolutely sensational. And if you smell the blossom as well, they've got a really... Oh no, I broke it. Let's just say I thinned the apples. <laughs> it's got a really, really lovely fragrance. It's quite soft and delicate. Oh, love it. And also, look what we've got down here. All the rhubarb. And in fact, I might actually take some of these. Ah, it's always good just to tear your rhubarb from the bottom rather than cutting it, and that'll encourage more new stems to grow. But look at that red. 
Oh, I think we'll have a crumble for dinner. Harvest just a couple more. How about that? I think that's the first harvest of the year. And it makes a great um, brolly for the sun. <laughs> ah. And I just hope I get some apples this year and that the rats don't steal them like they did before. Do you know what else I've noticed down here? Another fruit <laughs> is the raspberries. And I'm sure I pruned these quite hard, but I've got a feeling maybe I missed a few because we've actually got lots of buds on the way. But they're very early because this is an autumn fruiting plant. So I must have accidentally left a few of the buds, um, sorry, the stems. But never mind, we'll have some now and some in autumn. Win win. Further down and into the wildlife corner. What's going on down here? Oh, it's just so beautiful down here. Especially now this view has been opened up down into the orchard. And you might remember, I was wondering, do I take on the orchard? <laughs> well, I can't. <laughs> it's going to be a community project, which is a great idea. But maybe, maybe one day they might want somebody who can keep bees and I might learn how to keep bees. <laughs> but down here, We've got some wildflowers popping up and also the Brunnera is still going strong. Very happy with my harvest of rhubarb. Also got lots of stunning aces coming out down here. This one in particular, Sangu Kaku, I think it's called with its gorgeous greeny red leaves with a little hint of orange and then the bright red stem. I'm placing my bet that this year is gonna be the best year for the climbing rose behind me. It's got so many buds on it. Well, growing tips, should I say, but it will soon have lots of buds on it. <sighs> honesty, just look at all the honesty. <laughs> I remember these plants were destined for the wedding last year. Hello, Robin. But they didn't flower, uh, nor did the ones that I planted at home. I think I just sowed them a little bit too late. Um, but I mean, to think I almost took some of these out, it's magnificent. And especially as the evening starts to get a bit cooler and darker, they just they're just so bright and vibrant, that, that white is just so beautiful. Are you going to come over here, Robin? Come on, touch on there for us. <laughs> and uh, whilst it does cover this bed, I'm not too worried. It does quite nicely cover the fact that I've got a very messy bottom of the plot down there. <laughs> so when I said that I've upgraded my equipment, basically I've got a new digital SLR and you may know, you may not know, but I studied photography back in the day. That's how I met my now husband. But my current camera, or my old camera, only shot photos. And I stuck with some basic gear to shoot these videos for a long, long, long time, getting by by using my phone. And to be honest, it did absolutely fine. And, you know, there's a lot you can do with a phone, especially for YouTube, if you're somebody that's just getting started. Um, but I think in some footage that I shot near the new year, I think I edited it out because I rambled for far too long. But I, I went on, it was when I was thinking about, you know, what am I doing this year? What do I want to achieve this year? And I cut out a, a lot of... <laughs> chit chat uh, basically about me and nostalgia and I think because of the wedding there was a lot of reflecting on you know how we met and going back to the days of photography when we'd go on photo walks all the time and oh, how passionate about it I was and I don't know I also want to go and you know visit a load of gardens and stuff and something just dawned on me that I'm starting to get fed up with the process with my phone and I wasn't very happy with the footage and the quality and you know I can do so much more with 
good gear. Now, I haven't shot video on SLR before, but I know how to shoot photos. So I figured it can't be too hard. And so basically I've invested a lot of money into a brand new camera, which is what I'm shooting this on, as well as another little gadget um, to do the me walking around stuff because this camera is not as good uh, with stabilization. Uh, so yes, I hope you enjoy the footage this year because it cost a lot. <laughs> But no, it was it was due and I'm really enjoying it already. I've only had it about a week or so. Um, just the things that I can do now and it's got me really excited to make more videos and the sorts of shots that I can be getting. Um, I hope you enjoy it as much as I'm making it and it's just sort of reignited a bit of a spark for me. And um, yeah, it's just on the up essentially. So uh, do let me know what you think. As I say, it's still getting some, taking me to taking some getting used to and I'm sorry we're running out of daylight now it's starting to get that cold blue colour because I've been sorting out the strawberry patch all day and that took a long time but um, yeah so that's the backstory behind that and yeah it's just ignited something again and I'm feeling really very passionate about making videos and shooting photos again because the gear that I'm using is um, is fun to use. <laughs> there are so many bluebells down in there and the forget-me-not as well is just like a sea of blue. Absolutely stunning. But as for the rest of the plot, well, let's walk around this way and see my borders. Still got lots of weeding to do but they're mostly ready now for lots of planting in coming weeks. Months. Well, you know how I mentioned that Mr. Robin has become more and more friendly? Well, I thought I'd try my luck recently and give him some mealworm. And I've been trying this for eight, nine years, ever since I've had the allotment, and it never happened until this very moment. I couldn't believe it. And I just had to freeze, but I tried again. And sure enough, he just kept coming back. And I just couldn't believe it. This one here is in slow motion. But he did sit there for a couple of seconds and I've obviously won over his trust but it turns out he does have a nest behind my picnic table in the hedgerow and so he keeps going over to feed the chicks and obviously he needs to keep his energy up as well and one day I was in the potting shed potting up some seeds and I, and I kept seeing him by the door and I threw him a few mealworm and then I thought you know what I'll just put some on the table and he kept coming back. And then he came right up to me and it's just unbelievable this sudden relationship we have. It's become so trustworthy and I think it's partly because he's desperate because he just needs the food because it's a busy season for him. Unfortunately there's still not a lot to see inside the polytunnel because I need to get my butt into gear and start sewing which is what I'm going to be doing this week. Potatoes, dahlias and all of the seeds basically it's all happening this week <laughs> and then i'll soon catch up and uh, it'll be fine it'll be fine how's your season going has your weather calmed down i know that i for one am very grateful that we're starting to get a bit more sunshine and a bit more warmth at last i'm gonna go now it's starting to get a bit chilly and i've got a lot to pack up after my busy day but thank you very much for watching and stay tuned. I will soon be launching a Patreon, by the way. So I'm really excited for that, especially with all this new gear that I've got. I'm going to have lots more new footage and behind the scenes. So if that's something you might be interested in, do stay tuned for the launch. And if you're already thinking, oh, Patreon, no, why is she doing it? Don't worry, nothing on here for everybody else is going to change. It's all going to stay exactly the same. Just be a few extras for those that want to join. See you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>